gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. Morning, truck buddies. Airborne trucker checking in from uh, Spartanburg, North Carolina. Not <laughs> North Carolina. Spartanburg, South Carolina. So we're getting all loaded and it's raining right now. Now my truck buddy, he forgot to flip his bundles back, which you're not saying nothing about it. So it's all good. But um, we'll be unloaded here. I'm, I'm pretty sure within 30 minutes. I mean, you got two guys working um, unloading the trucks. It, look, it looks kind of deceiving because when I was looking at it last night, I thought it was going to be to where you pull in, you go off to the right, you circle around back where the other truck is, that freight liner, and then and circle out. But the guy said it's tight back there. Like I said, I can't, you can't see from here. So he said what most of the drivers do, they pull in and um, they back out. So... pretty simple now the funny thing is I'm pretty sure we'll all go to we might go to the same place we might go to three different places who knows but uh depending on how we stage if everybody stages right we can pretty much park right where we're at but just facing out so hopefully that's the case oh he's getting out of flipping now but I'm surprised he didn't flip them last night. Of all days I woke up, man, I wanted some damn breakfast, man. I mean, I like a sit-down breakfast like Denny's or, you know, IHOP or just, just a hot breakfast for some reason. I just, I don't know, man. I'm weird like that. Sometimes I, you know, I try to eat once a day, you know, to, to watch my calorie intake. And then sometimes I just, you know, just eat random stuff at random times. But I'm trying to be consistent. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's not supposed to rain too long, though. I looked at the weather report, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, but uh, my truck buddy right here that's getting unloaded, man, gave me, gave me a good idea. I don't know why I don't ever do it, but I guess usually because I stopped too late. But uh, he was walking around. He was uh, It's a decent-sized parking lot. And he was walking around getting his steps in uh, before it got dark. So he probably, he was already walking when I got here. So he probably walked about a good mile or two just around the parking lot. I would start doing that. Uh, get some kind of extra exercise, some extra movement. Um, because sometimes you don't get nearly enough uh, during the day. Even though you, know, you, you might tarp and throw straps and stuff like that. Sometimes it's still not enough uh, exercise to, to burn the calories. Calories in, calories out type of thing. Got half a tank. Now, like I said, I ain't talked to anybody, so I wonder when, all, when are all going to send our empty in. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't matter. You can send your empty in at night. You can send it first thing in the morning uh, or whatever. But like I say, though, sometimes, hey... You had to be careful sending your empty in too early. Like I said, if you send it in the night before, you don't know if your damn fleet manager got your pre-planned on something, and uh, you dog gonna send your empty in, and then you, know, you get ready to lay down or do whatever, and uh, bam, you get dispatched. Like literally get dispatched. You gotta leave. Now that happened to me when I was in uh, where were we at? My wife was riding with me at the time. We was somewhere in North Carolina uh, for the weekend, and. I, yeah, I was empty because I empty. I got empty early. That was right. I got lucky. I think was it Friday. I can't remember, but got empty or whatnot. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna send my empty in. You know, first thing Monday morning shouldn't be no big deal. Send my empty in around about four or five or whatever. It was something ridiculous. It was real early. Sent the empty in. Laid down. You know, heard the phone go off. You know, I noticed that. You know, your empty message has been received. I heard another ding. What the hell? Got dispatched on a Home Depot load. Now, I don't know how it works in theory, but I guess uh, they have the power to dispatch loads too, or you know, they see drivers who are empty. They say, hey, there's an empty driver. We can go ahead and put this load on them. 
And I think that's what happened to me because, like I said, I wasn't expecting to uh, to leave early. So that's why, you know, when you see him empty, and, hey, make sure you, you're kind of almost ready to go type of thing. You know, but, hey, teach his own, man. Every, every situation is different. But I'll never forget that, though, man. I got dispatched first thing that morning. I'm half asleep. Like, man, this can't be real. But sure enough, man, they hooked me up. See, I wasn't even, I wasn't even five minutes. Trying to figure out what this other guy's trying to do. Guess he's gonna turn around. Unless he's waiting for him to come out. But yeah, man, but like I said, the parking lot's plenty big, man. All I would do is um once you get turned around, it's enough room for us to wait. This is like a smaller beacon. Uh, but no other truck showed up. But he's about to back out and he's going to pull in. But like I said, all, that's all I would do. All he's got to do is whip around once he backs out. Uh, park off on the side. It's, it's more than enough room. Uh, they're not they're not nearly that busy. Plus it's first thing in the morning too. Alright, wait my turn. about 9 30 i got the infamous email the message of where where i would like to adventure next so had three choices though know, it's an optical illusion but uh two out of cm tucker i haven't been to this one i don't think it's in our uh, rock hill all right one's going to snellville georgia the other one's going to ohio the math ain't mathing and then we got another one out of Prosperity, South Carolina. Lumber going to uh, Motion, Tennessee. Now, I forgot what we pick up that way. I kind of should have took that one. But I took the first one going to Georgia. I just took into consideration all the miles, the headache. Took the lesser of the three evils again. You know, like I say, man, the math ain't math on some of this stuff, but. Hey, it is what it is, man. But I definitely would have, uh, if the high or low would have paid different, I would have took that one. Um, you know, because it'll put me in a better position. I would have been further away from the house on so Tuesday delivered tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. They would have to find me something. Don't you know. Start working me back south. So in theory, I would have got something different, or in theory, should have got something better, but. You can't go with the unknown. I can only go from what I know. But just the option that I've known, and the, the the given, the given knowns, you know. So I'm just gonna roll with this one going down to uh, Snellville, Georgia. It's on the east side of Atlanta. You don't even make it to Atlanta. It's like by Lawrenceville. So hopefully I shouldn't catch too much traffic since I'm not going into Atlanta. Now I might be going into Atlanta tomorrow to pick up, uh, but who knows, man? Could be grabbing some stuff. Uh, shingles, cement. Uh, I don't know. It's a bunch of a whole bunch of anything in Georgia, so we'll see. But we're gonna get on down the road, get down to the CM Tucker, 
grab some breakfast, get loaded. Uh, figure I'm gonna stop. Well, they got parking. I'm delivering to a Lowe's, so they got parking. But before I stop for now, I'm grab me a shower and uh, see how this day works out, man. We'll see you on the next one. All right, so this is CM Tucker here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I've never been to this one, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, their gate, man, looks like an employee entrance, so you gotta be careful. Uh, but you come in, you follow the sign, you stop left of the scale, uh, you walk through the, the truck driver door, give them your information, you get your uh, your ticket, you get your ticket, you get loaded, I think uh, you take a left out, stop by the scale, uh, on our dispatch notes it says get it scaled because their, their scale is not that good, and then you go about your business. Now I literally have to go the same way that I came here. Uh, now my truck buddy from this morning, he already came out here. He was about 10 or 15 minutes ahead of me. I didn't get a chance to ask him where he was going. Um, I'll ask him if I uh, catch him while we're securing. But uh, you never know, man. You never know. But I seen uh, TMC trucks heading the opposite way when I was leaving. They was probably going to Greer, like I said. But you never know, man. This you kind of you kind of just hey, you go with the flow. But uh, very simple. Like I said, the Lowe's got parking. I'm gonna stop at uh, Flying J, exit 160 on I-85, grab a shower and get settled for the night. Now, hindsight 5050, of course, in my mind, if I was dispatched first thing this morning, I probably could deliver today. It says till four o'clock, man. I've got an appointment time, but they stop at four o'clock. But like I said, it's a four hour ride. Even if I was leave right now, 12, I'll put me there at four o'clock. You know, 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? Four hours. So, we're going to make it do what it do, man. Good morning, truck buddies. Airborne Trucker checking in from uh, Snellville, Georgia. So, I'm usually up and at them, man. I'm, I'm up before the chickens, man, but... This levels here start early, and ain't no complaint. I, I ain't gonna even uh, fuss about that. So it's about shoot 4:45, almost five o'clock. Heard a tap on the window. So you already know what that means. And I don't, I don't oversleep, and I'm a light sleeper. But uh, guy woke me up and said, "Hey, pull down to the other end. We can get started." It's all right. So I threw my clothes on right quick. Started pulling down here. Now he didn't see the other truck. There's two of us down here. He was like, my bad. <laughs> it's all good. It's time before the damn time, so I ain't gonna complain, man. Let me snatch these straps off. And get unloaded and I'm it's gonna be my turn. Can't beat it with a stick, man. Starting the day off right. Yeah, so it's not too often, man, that I, I get waking up unless it's like some random time that are getting started because like I said you know most lows are like seven to seven to whatever so I was gonna get up at six take my straps off I didn't take my straps off last night because it, it I, I drove through some rain and I didn't want to put them up wet so I said I'll just go ahead and just take straps off in the morning it ain't no big deal that'll be dry when I put them up but uh to get that knock on the door man hey it don't it don't make me no difference you could have knocked on the door at Three in the morning, midnight, whatever. You ready to get it unloaded? Hey, just get the stuff off the truck. Hey, I'll get up. Like, so I, don't, I don't sleep too hard no way. So I was like, damn, I know I ain't sleep past my alarm. Then, you know, once I start fiddling around, I looked at the time. I was like, damn, it's <laughs> barely five o'clock. But like I said, he had two trucks, but you can't see the other truck because he was down off in the cut uh, uh, with his lights off. You know, but... Like I said, I thought, no, they keep track of what they're getting. It don't make me no difference, so it's all good. Hey, something I want to talk about, like when you, uh, I mean, it should be common sense, but this is how I think. If you're like at a customer, you know, everybody sleeps different. So I'll leave it at that. You can read them between the lines. Hey, make sure you got some, uh, 
know, some clothes next to you to put on right quick. You know, if you're not presentable, just in case somebody knock on your door, you know, to wake you up. Like, if you, you know, everybody sleep different, everybody's got different sleep habits and all that good stuff, but, you know, keep some, some shorts close. Uh, if you don't have any, you know, just in case, because like I said, you get waking up in the middle of the night, <laughs> you gotta be ready, man. <laughs> but yeah, they're moving fairly quick. Um, think they're about done with that one. What I did was he told him to pull down. Like I said, he didn't know he had two trucks, but uh, they had to take the stuff off and they had to put it right here. So I, just, I just said, hey, I can, you know, he said he's gonna move, uh, put the stuff onto the side. I said, I can just back up. I mean, God dog, man. So I just backed up uh, so they can take the stuff off this first truck, get it situated, and then I'll take his spot and move forward and they'll just unload me. You know, but it, it's all good, man. Like I said, it's starting the day off right. Like I said, no complaints here. You know, anytime you get unloaded early, hey, it's awesome. It is awesome. I didn't venture off too far, but um, across the street was a Super Walmart. Uh, I think they had a Sam's too. No, I'm sorry. It was just a Super Walmart. Uh, plenty of food places like a Whataburger, Freddy's, uh, Krispy Kreme. Uh, it's like a little outlet mall. Uh, about a quarter of a mile. Um, down here straight ahead. So it's a lot of decent stuff here. They've got plenty of parking too at this Lowe's. Um, I parked on the other side. Um, right there by the receiving door just because there's more room down there and the other guy he had circled around he had pulled down here which you know it's all good but yeah man I wasn't expecting no damn no no five o'clock wake up you know but hey you, you make it happen you know get unloaded and you go back to sleep because it's only six right now so ain't nobody else gonna be in the office till for about another hour or two at least I'll say two hours, because that's eight, that'll be seven Central Standard Time. For me, anyway, for my fleet manager. But they definitely don't need no more of this stuff, man, because they got stuff on both sides. Uh, it goes all the way back this way. So I was surprised when they said they had two trucks coming this way. And I knew it was going to be one of the guys. Well, I didn't know it was. I seen one of the guys get loaded. So that's probably the guys going out there to Snellville with me. And sure enough, it was the guy that we unloaded uh, with the shingles yesterday. But they're about done with him. It'll be my turn. So that was uneventful, got unloaded and everything. Um, well, I say you usually get unloaded early. First thing, you get better load options. I got hit with um, two options. I've got one option that's out of Atlanta, which I already knew, kind of. Uh, some shingles going to Swan Swanona, Georgia. It's 200 miles. Decent run, but I got another option out of Noonan, Georgia going to Odessa, Florida. That, that's the one I'm looking for. Now, I know I'm going back to Florida a little early, but with the pay and where I'm sitting at revenue-wise, hey, I can, I can pedal freight for the last two days and I'll have a decent week. Um, Odessa is near like Tampa area, so I could pull something out the Home Depot Distribution Center. I could uh, go to James Hardy. Um, 
I can also haul some, uh, I think, mulch back up that way, too. So we'll see, man. This is probably by far the best load I had this week next to the one that I dropped off Monday. So it's going down this road. <laughs> it didn't dawn on me until I damn got dispatched. I was like, Noonan? I was like, what do we pick up in Noonan? Hey, it's more shingles. Hey, so that's that's a win, man. The place don't have parking. I don't care. I'm pretty sure uh, I-75, exit 275. Shoot, I'll stop right there at the rest area. Um, there's a rest area somewhere right there around there somewhere. So I got to go fight Atlanta traffic right quick. I say right quick, but, you know. Can't beat it with a stick, man. Like I said, it's a decent load. I'm surprised. And I have I don't have to do any backtracking. That's the kind of stuff I like. You know, when you go pick up, like, bam, it's like on the way. Now, like yesterday, I had to damn go over and then come back the same way I came. But anytime you can reload, you know, you don't have to backtrack. That's You're not wasting any miles. So like I said, it's right there before uh, Tampa by Clearwater. I've never been down there. But there's a uh, rest area somewhere right there in that area. Matter of fact, my crazy self. It should be right there before 275. So I stopped there for the night. Like I said, probably get uh heck if I if I'm lucky, I can get that um I won't have enough time. Yeah, I will, yeah, I will. Uh they got a Home Depot load that loads out of Tampa that goes up to Jacksonville that unloads at night. So we'll see if I get that. That's just something to think about. But uh, we're going to get on down this road and grab these shingles. There you have it. This is what I'm talking about right here. I didn't do it on the last one. Now you always put two straps on your first set of shingles and then two on your last set of shingles. But when you get to the ones in the middle, you gotta flip that one bundle up and put a strap across top of it. All right, so it's secure. Because if not, it sits right there. And of course it's not secure to nothing, but hey, there's drivers that do what they want. So it is what it is, man. But yeah, you flip up the middle ones two on the back you get your destination you flip them down five minutes so i'm gonna head to um odessa florida not afraid out where i'm gonna stop it i'm either gonna stop in dade city at the pilot or i can go like five miles further and stop at the rest area so we'll see what the time's looking like and i'll judge from there so i'm gonna get on the road if i go by tifton i'm gonna get the truck wash if there's not a line do that uh pretty much about it man yeah this place man in and out man in and out in 45 minutes uh, that's you know check in load and secure 45 minutes man uh, i think probably even that long yeah 45 minutes of that 40 45 minutes but that looks good it's my last little last walk around i mean i've already done it but If you're having problems drinking water, buy one of these. It's pretty much what you need a day. It's almost a gallon of water. So you drink one of those a day, you'll be good to go. Your uh everything should come out clear if you know what I'm talking about. Like I said, don't always walk around, wanna check your stuff out, man. See no issues fairly new trailer I think it's a brand new trailer I don't know how I know it's brand new it's how they did the, the Fontaine sticker and of course the miles extra so that's good to go trucks a little dirty but uh 
the rain that I ran across, it wasn't enough to wash off the mud, so. It's good to go. Check my steers. It's still wearing, like I said, just I'm keeping an eye on it. You can kind of see where the tread's missing. how it changes right there at the top. Like some bad alignment or something. Looks like another bald spot there. So, I guess I'll still do my due diligence. Driver's side's good. All right, man. Let's tally who. Shoot him in Dead City. Stopped, filled the truck up. I looked over. It wasn't on line for a truck wash. And we're going to get the truck wash. Now, I did something that was out of character, but you kind of got to know your truck and don't take chances when you have to. Now, my fuel light came on. It was on for a minute. So I wasn't sure. I was like, well, I should be kind of good uh, to make it. Uh, to my last fuel stop, you know, for the night, cause I could stay here, but it's a funky little parking lot, so I'm gonna go to the rest area. That's 10 miles up the road. Uh, but yeah, I was almost at 1,200 miles, and that's, you know, about. It used to say six miles a gallon. You got 200 gallons in fuel. I think one. I got 100 gallon and 110 gallon, so that's 210 gallons, and I filled up 195 gallons. So you do the math, and I've been idling the last couple of days. But like I said, I don't, I don't do it all the time. I usually fill up my at quarter of a tank because I passed uh, two or three other fuel stops, but they're a bad setup. So I just went in and made it to this one. Like I said, filled up. It's like almost 800 bucks in diesel. Then I'm going to get the truck wash and then I'm going to Charlie Mike uh, to the rest area. You see Dade City, exit 285. That's the rest. Uh, that's the, the flying job that's filled up at. It's got the truck wash that we use, so it's just, you know, kill two birds with one stone and head on to the rest area. Morning, truck buddies. Airborne trucker checking in from uh, Florida. So I've got about another 20, 25 miles, give or take. Take off at 7.30, get there uh, right there at 8, hopefully, right where they start. They got strict directions say, hey, wait on the road, don't pull into their yard. So do that and see what I get next. Not expecting much. Um, right now, I'm just, you know, my Monday delivery set me up pretty much for the rest of the week. So I'm, I'm sitting all right for revenue. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. So if I get anything, that's pretty decent. And it's just, it's just gravy on top of the damn biscuits, all right? But I want to talk about something right quick. I just thought about something. I was getting up this morning. I don't know what made me think about it. I've always talked about it before, but I want to do a video on it. Now, it's very vital that you do your research when you, you know you join a company, you know, or just anything in general with trucking. The thing I want to touch on, the thing I want to touch on is, uh, when should you buy a truck or when should I become an owner operator or you know, should I stay a company driver? Me personally, I have no desire to run a truck. All right. I have no desire to buy a truck. But I do have the experience, you know, with four years of, you know, learning on the company's dime. I've talked about that in my earlier videos. The time to learn is driving for a company. Get all your experience. You know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And it's on their dime, i.e., if you break down, the company has to pay for it, uh, freight, all that stuff. You know, insurance, whatever cost is incurred is on the company. You're just the driver. Just take your mental notes, make good notes, and make good decisions. And then when you have enough experience, then you go out there and buy a truck. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing it in reverse. Drivers do it every day, every year. But be weary. One breakdown can set you back. 
one breakdown could put you out of business, maybe. All right. Get your experience first. It's nothing wrong with being a company driver. Your end goal might be to, you know, be an owner operator, have your own company. And that's great, you know, but don't rush into it. Truck ain't going nowhere. All right. Truck has been around for Lord knows forever. All right. Only thing that's changed is the drivers and the equipment. If you talk to some of the old timers, yeah, things change, but in general, most of it's still the same. Truck is not going anywhere. So don't rush to fail. All right. Like I say, you, you can do it. There's drivers that have been successful going out there, you know, buying equipment off the jump or leasing a truck, you know, going straight to just leasing a truck. It's okay, man, but I'm telling you, if, if the company that you're with is not going to help you set you up for success, you're going to fail, all right? I don't want you to fail. I don't want nobody to fail. That's why I do these videos. That's why I want, you know, to make sure you, somebody's learning something from my videos, from my channels, all right? This is about as transparent. Is that damn windshield, all right? When I get asked questions, I ask them truthfully. Um, and I just try to be, you know, just try to give a straight answer because, you know, that's how most people make their decisions on a company or, or decisions on just what they want to do in life or just stuff in general. So I try to give, you know, just how it is or my experience, I can say how it is because, you know, everybody's experience is going to vary. Everybody's experience is going to vary in trucking. Everybody's experience is going to vary at TMC. Like I always say, you can get 10 drivers from here. And it's going to be 10 different experiences with 10 different pays. All right. But think about that, man. Just, you know, if you're going to do flatbed, hey, make sure you know what truck you're going to get. What engine, transmission. Do you want an automatic? Do you want a manual? Do you want a, uh, you know, a 13 speed, an 18 speed? You know, do you want a damn Peterbilt? Do you want to want a Kenworth? Do you want an international? Hey, that's all the stuff you got to think about, you know, when you're going to start running your own business. You know, what what lanes are you going to run? Where should I run? That's all the stuff that you should be learning at your first job, at your, you know, at, at a company job, no matter who you pull for, you know. That's just my opinion, you know. So, like I said, if I ever wanted to make a jump, if I wanted to buy a truck, you know, i.e., if I should have did it two years ago, if I wanted to buy a truck with TMC because it was easier, you could, you know, they did it to where you could, uh, you know, you lease a truck and it's like your payments vary from eight, five to 800 bucks a, a week. I can't remember how it really works. I never looked into it. But now I know you got to have a down $20,000 down payment if you want to do a truck through TMC. So most drivers, or a lot of drivers are just getting outside financing and you no know, buying their own truck or they might still might buy a truck through the company. But all that stuff, man, hey, learn that on the company's dime, man. Learn, what, like let's say, learn the freight lanes on, on the company's dime. If you break down, if you kind of get an idea like, man, how much... This is gonna cost X amount of dollars. I remember uh year before last got towed from man, it's about 200 miles. Uh my my accelerator pedal went out or something like that. So I got towed from it was somewhere in Tennessee, I think was it Nashville or Knoxville or something. It was about 150 miles, give or take, you know. And the tow driver thought he had he had somebody on the hook. Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm a company driver, so whatever you charge them, it's, 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 you charging them, you ain't charging me because, like, I can kind of see it in his eyes that like he, he's going to try to overcharge me, you know? But those are things you got to think about, man, with breakdowns. You got to have the money set away for breakdowns, man, I'm telling you. Pay yourself as a company driver, you know, pay yourself a decent wage, and then put the rest back in maintenance. But you need to know your operating costs. You got to know how much it costs for fuel. Yesterday I spent, I spent, <laughs> Yesterday, TMC spent almost $800 to fill this truck up on 192 gallons. Or was it $900? So that's kind of stuff you got to think about, you know, when you're not trying to find a good rate for for, uh, for freight, for the fuel surcharge. You know, it's just, it's so many things that you got to think about when it's your truck. As a company driver, man, all I got to do I get dispatched, I go pick the load up and deliver the load safely, I get paid. Everything else in between, the TMC has to worry about. So just think about that kind of stuff, you know, before you rush off and buy a truck. So I'm gonna say this ain't the time to buy a truck. I mean, maybe, maybe not, you know? If you have the will and desire, if that's your your goal, you'll be successful if you wanna be successful. Now, it's not gonna be easy, you know? Even with trucking, trucking, even as a company driver, trucking is not easy. You know, like I say, you're not going to get rich your first year. So take the first year to get established in a decent company and learn on their dime. You know, 
get your goal. If you're single, you got family, whatever the case might be, put your money up, try to save a little bit of money so you can get a down payment for a truck or however you want to do it. But have a plan, man. Just don't just don't jump off the porch blind, because I'm telling you, you jump off the porch and play in traffic, you mess around and get hit. All right. Like I said, I'm not trying to scare nobody, but just it's just it's just stuff to think about, man. You gotta think about that stuff, you know? Because like I say, one one major breakdown, one decent breakdown, hey, and you and you're like you're stuck like Chuck. You know, so that's just something to think about. You know, it's Thursday. It's gonna be a great day, man. I always speak that stuff into existence, man. I always you know pray every morning. I pray for myself, I pray for everybody out there, I always pray for my you know my, my subscribers, I just pray for everybody in general because you know, everybody needs that blessing, man. Everybody needs that protection. I mean, if that's, that, if that's your faith, you know, I don't never really talk about politics and religion, but when they come up, I do talk about it. I'll never shy away from it, you know, because that's just how I am. But yeah, I do pray for everybody, man. Like I said, man, I just pray for everybody to be safe and successful, you know, and just and have a great day and a blessed day, man, because you just you just never know what you're going to encounter, man. Because when I was coming through Alabama, not Alabama, I was in Georgia yesterday, coming down uh, 85, it's like three accidents. One big truck, he slid off into the into the ditch. His truck's on the damn pavement, but his, his trailer's in the ditch. So he's gonna need a tow truck for that. Then I seen a damn uh, three car accident, northbound, car flipped over in a ditch. Two cars, you know, they're pretty much beat up. Probably tailgating, but the pavement was probably slick. And then the last accident I seen was just, uh, another car in the ditch, you know, on the shoulder, or in the medium, not the ditch, but in the medium. You know, so you just, you, it, like I say, I don't trust myself and I definitely don't trust other drivers. So that's why I just I always keep my head on a swivel. I drive like I'm in Afghanistan. You just, you got to expect everything. You can't be, a, you cannot be an aggressive driver as a, as a truck driver. And I see it every day. The truck drivers, they have tailgating each other. Just, you know, why, man? You know, why? You know, you, you, you know what trucks are governed at most of them. So there's no sense of tailgating somebody. You know, all it takes for them to tap their brakes and then it's a chain reaction. So I just, I just keep my distance and I always try to expect the unexpected because that's, you have to anticipate that kind of stuff. Don't get upset. Just like if you're getting ready to merge on traffic. Now, if I can, I try to leave enough space. All right, when you're merging on, uh, on a get on ramp, especially if traffic's kind of slow, I try to stay back at least two trough lengths. And though some people might disagree with me, but if you stay back just enough, so traffic can merge in the traffic will keep going but everybody wants to bunch up on each other and not let nobody in you gotta let the people in the people gotta get on you know but just you just gotta think outside the box man you just gotta think about any single thing every single thing that could have made happen when you're on the road with these with these jokers out here with four wheelers and big trucks because that's how i just stay in the right lane keep my distance and make it do what it do you know you know you're gonna go 65 miles per hour if you know you got a $48,000, $48,000, $48,000 pound load on your back, and you got to go up a hill, just stay in the right lane, man. Just go ahead and just, hey, just, just eat it up. Don't try to pass nobody because it makes no sense because then you're going to tie up two lanes. But you, you run your truck how you want to run your truck, man. But brush my teeth, get this day started, and we'll see you on the next one. So I made it. I've been here about maybe about an hour. Had time to stop and take a shower. Um, and just like I thought, I was pre planned on something. But I was wrong about where I'm going. Now, if I'd have been a bet, man, like I always talk about, I clearly would have thought I'd have picked up some insulation um, tomorrow. But I guess they did me one better. I'm 
picking up some place in Jacksonville. I've never heard of a place. Um, I got one o'clock a pickup appointment. So probably gonna get unloaded tonight. Head back to the house. Uh, let's see, nine, 10. I'm trying to think. I'll call 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, 12, 10. Yeah, okay, so I can go home. I have to talk to my wife so she can have to come pick me up. She'll have to get up. Uh, but go home, do my 10 hour break, and I've got a one o'clock appointment. Now, the only reason I can't go in early because they got a note on there saying that they, uh, they charge for rescheduling. So I ain't gonna worry about going early. I'm gonna just go at the time. I should still be able to get loaded in a decent amount of time and still be back at the house by three o'clock, give or take. So it's all good. But yeah, uh, I guess St. Augustine has two loads, not loads, uh, two Home Depots. And I think I'm the one on the south side of town because I, I delivered to one before, uh, I think on the other side of 95. No, I think it's off of Highway 1. Anyway, I think it's another one. I've never been to this location, but it's vital that you... Uh, read the directions on the uh, dispatch because I could have came from the other way where the GPS was taking me, it wouldn't have been no big deal. Um, it's enough room to turn around back here, but it just made it easier for me to stage the truck uh, facing forward. All I gotta do is drive straight down there to the middle, right there where that tractor is, and I'm pretty sure I get unloaded right there uh, about nine o'clock, about seven or so, 7.30. Once it cools off a little bit, I'll start taping off my straps. Uh, I'll probably wait till about, about 8.30 to pull my tarp. Not sure it's gonna rain anymore. It's already rained once. And uh, if you stay in Florida, or if you've ever been to Florida, and you know about Florida, you can literally be driving down the interstate. One side I'll be getting rain, the other side won't be. Where it's, it's sun's out, it's raining. So, hey. It's Florida, man, but I, I just, I love the weather, man. I love everything about it, man, minus the damn crappy paying jobs. So, depending if I, I probably better get no footage tonight because it's going to be too dark. So, I'll probably just put this video out. Um, see what's going on tomorrow. I don't have an appointment. I guess it's going to be a drop and hook for Monday. So, I guess I'll uh, leave at a decent time to where I can get my 10-hour break in. Uh, might be a drop and hook drop it and get a trailer and get on out the way and get on out of there uh i haven't been to that new home depot distribution center in charlotte so i think they moved it i don't, I don't know where it's at but um like i said a few options around there might get something out of there who knows but like i said we're about that when we get to it so hopefully get unloaded at a decent hour tonight hope they start on time at nine o'clock head back to the house um, probably not even an hour from the house if that then uh, park the truck, sleep in my bed tonight, and uh, make it do what it do. Well, it's about that time. It's eight o'clock, man. Go ahead and snatch this tarp off. Hope the damn audio comes out. Shouldn't get any more rain uh, for the rest of the evening. See if they gonna start on time. I know the one in Jacksonville, that dude, the same guy always unload you. And it's like, um, he starts promptly and unload you quick. So, let's see how this goes. Take everything off now, so I don't have to worry about it. I have to hurt worry about rushing. This one's gonna take the longest right here. It's fooling with this tarp. Gotta get to the house and do laundry. As you can see I got my shorts on. But got on my boots though. I don't play around, man. Last my wore tennis shoes outside the truck. I dropped a damn uh, four inch hook on my toe, man. My damn toe was hurting for like forever, it seemed like. So I was told myself I'm outside the truck. Make sure I have my boots on.
This is taking too long. Let me speed it up for y'all. So it's already an adventure. So at this location, they unload in the front. No big deal. Just drive around to the front. But you got like, they must be getting ready to get off work because like everybody's just looking at each other like, you see this big ass truck right here. So you know they came to get unloaded, you know. And it, just, it, is, it is what it is, man. You just be surprised at some of the damn characters you run across here in trucking, man. Like I said, the one in Jacksonville, and hey, the guy don't play around. He'll tell you straight up, like, hey, starting at, uh, damn, I think I want to say they start at nine too. It's either eight or nine. Well, it's got to be nine because I think they do it when the store closes. Hey, like eight o'clock, he comes. You know, if you're at the truck, I said, sort of, hey, I'm gonna start at, I'm gonna start promptly, and he sure does. Pull forward. Uh, one of the guys that help you with the tarp, usually, roll it up and get on about your business, man. In and out within an hour, you know, so. Let's see how long this takes. It's just, it's just hilarious to me, you know. You know, everybody, everybody's looking at each other like, uh, I think uh, Pedro's gonna unload you. I'm not trying to be funny. That's the guy's name, Pedro. You know, so, um, whatever, man. Get unloaded. Head on to the house. But uh, it's nine o'clock, so I'm gonna see how long this takes. I ain't holding my breath. Morning truck buddies, everyone trucker checking in from uh, the house, man. So I got in a little late last night, about midnight. It was a little bit of construction, so it took a little, little over an hour to get to the house. But um, I've got a one o'clock appointment. I'm gonna leave a little early. I'm gonna see if I can get a attempt to get loaded and see how bad it is because the place I'm going's got terrible reviews. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. So gonna make it do what it do man so whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen but i figured hell i mean i'm only uh it's like 10 miles from me probably less than that um but like i said I always when i've never been somewhere i always do reviews on a place or I'll, i look at the reviews and see if they have any but like i said most of the ones that i've seen it said that you know they had a, a certain amount you know a certain check-in time appointment time and they get loaded well after the appointment time or they didn't get loaded at all. So, that's crazy, man. But, no complaints here. It's Friday, man. It's, it's a blessing, I'll tell you that. I always like to touch on random stuff, you know, every now and then. Don't let somebody or anybody, anyone, live rent free in your head. You know, if you got a bad gripe with TMC or a bad gripe with PNS or whatever, hey, if things didn't work out for you at that company or at a certain particular situation, hey, just move on, man. Oh, don't be dwelling on that stuff, man, because it's just life's too short, you know, to be worrying about uh, other folks and other companies. Hey, just just keep it moving, man. You know, I don't you know wish no ill will on nobody. You know. Just, I just just try to take care of mine, man. Just try to do the best that I can, you know. But others will feel other, you know, feel otherwise, and that's okay, I guess. But like I said, man, life's too short, dude. You know, live life, love life, because everything can change in the blink of an eye, you know. But I don't get online arguing with folks. I just, you know, everybody's got their opinion, man. You may or may not agree with it, but everybody's got their own opinion about whatever. So it's all good though, man. I'm gonna get on this truck, get to this particle board. I guess that's what it is, some kind of lumber, and I gotta tarp it. Um, if they don't have a place for me to tarp it there, I tarp it when I get to the house. Like I said, I'm, I'm literally right down the street from this place. So uh, first time picking up there, but I'm just a. Hey, 
uh, hope for the best and see how it works out, man. But I'm already expecting the worst. So when I get there, if anything other than that happens, hey, then it's a win. Got to do some yard work this weekend. Got to try to get in the habit of doing my yard every week. Um, so like when if I miss a week like I did last week, it ain't it ain't that that bad. I mean, but it's definitely some TLC. Got my gas can. I got to get some uh, fuel from a mower. And I'm trying to think if I got to put any gas in here. Uh, I got a quarter of a tank. I'll never fill this up. I just fill it up to about half. But since I'm getting uh, gas, I might just put some in the truck too. Do about. 20 bucks total like i said it just i think i fill up maybe once a month maybe if that you know so it's all good man it's all good hopefully everybody had an uneventful week this week i always say that and i mean it because I tell you man sometimes these roads can damn eat you up chew you up and spit you out man and it's you know nothing lasts forever good or bad so you gotta you gotta ride the wave man you gotta ride that wave. It's a heck of a roller coaster, man. So sometimes you just gotta enjoy that ride. Man, I hope I can get loaded early. Like I said, I'm not gonna be. Usually, if I'm not sure about a place, if I got an appointment time, I try to do no more than an hour. That, you know, I kind of you know try to show up no more than an hour early just in case, you know, to play it that way. Especially if they don't have no parking. It's mixed reviews about the parking too. They're saying that they do and they don't. I looked on Google, I seen trucks parked on the side of the road, so I don't know, man. I don't know. I just always be thinking about stuff too, like always looking for a job, another situation, but like I said, I'm not gonna leave for something unless I know for sure what the deal is, you know. This truck make this corner. So I think this, I'm gonna stay put, you know. The grass ain't always green on the other side, man. I always talk about that too. Like I say, man, do your own research when it comes to a company. You know, every company sells you dreams, man. But man, this is gonna be a hot one today. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's already, yes, yeah, 88 degrees already. Crazy. Man, I hope I can get loaded, man. Last night I got unloaded in a decent hour, man. After I talked to the guy once I got to the front, dude was cool, man. He's like, um, yeah, once the store closed, I'll be up here and unload you. It took him like 30 minutes. They closed at 10. I was unloaded in like 30 minutes. So he was real cool though. I said, man, you need to sleep over, you need to stay over. I said, nah, bro. <laughs> I'm going to the house, man. Because I got an hour ride to the house, I'm going home. So uh, it's like I don't blame you on that. Let's see if he got the code to get in. It's amazing. Sometimes you can see how people are just so miserable at, at their jobs or miserable at work. It just it just it just seeps through their pores. Now, this is my first time coming here. Like I said, I got a one o'clock appointment. So I get here, uh, I'll call it 12.30. There's a cone in front of the uh, the gate, so of course, you know, stop, whatever. Lady finally comes out, older lady. You know, I cut the truck off, you know, so you ain't nobody yelling at each other. It's like, pickup number. So I've got, I wrote my two numbers down, but there was another number in the dispatch. And I was like, is it a uh, 226 number? No, it starts with three, two, and it's five digits. So I'm like, okay, let me 
looked through my dispatch. Looked through the dispatch and I found it. So I said, you know, three, two, one, two, four, or whatever it was, or something like that. All right, pull around, do a U turn, and park back out there. That's all she says now. So, okay, so I guess I'll park and I'll walk back up there just, just to see what's going on. So, walking up, I'm looking at the gate. I see their hours. Their hours are from seven to twelve and one to four. So now, still not thinking. Walk up to the, you know, to the guard shack. I didn't open the door. I was like, they're on lunch. So I just. I'll go back to the truck and wait, you know, 30 minutes, whatever. When one clock gets here, you know, I'll walk back and, and see what I have to do. But um, the reviews ain't lying, man, because uh, somebody had said something about the uh, the guard lady, how you know how she's kind of rude. You know, <laughs> me personally, I'm going to say, hey, uh, right now, I said, you're at lunch. Uh, what time's your appointment? I'll say 1 o'clock. Okay, well, you're going to be getting loaded after lunch when they come back from lunch. Okay, got it, cool. You know, you park out here in front and then you walk back to my guard shack or I'll come get you or whatever and you'll get loaded. That's simple, man, but I don't know. Maybe she deal with a lot of crazy drivers, man. Just, it just, I don't know. Maybe just be old and miserable, man. But I just, I can't be miserable to people that I don't know. I can't be miserable, period. I mean, if I got things going on in my life, I'm not going to take them out on you. That's just crazy, man. You know, but teacher's on, man. It's Friday. Hey, I'm literally like five miles from the house. I don't care, but there was another review. Guy said he waited. I forgot how long. Now this falls on him. Now if they stop loading at a certain time, hey, by within an hour of them closing, hey, if nobody came and got you at three thirty, no, three thirty at the latest, hey, you need to go talk to somebody. Like, hey, am I still going to get loaded? To sit there and wait till they close and then say something, hey, that's foolish, man. So like I said, one o'clock, I'm gonna go back and see what she says. I'll probably just have to. Uh, well, why, I don't know if they're, if they're set up. I might, I'm not sure if I got to go back out. If I got to go back out this way to the front and to the right where that, that SUV's coming out of, or if I'm going to have to turn around right here and turn back in, which is right here. So, whatever, man. Like I said, I'm right down the street from the house. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. All right, that wasn't too bad after, you know, they was off their lunch break. Uh, another TMC truck. He stayed in Savannah, owner operator. So I'll see him Monday probably. Uh, give this tarp job B minus. B minus. It, it could be better. Too many wrinkles. Lines not even. But uh, yeah, after uh, got situated, got on in. I was loaded within 30 minutes. Now it's uh uh, uh Catching a damn brain fire, Louisiana Pacific. Uh, it's, it's tarped up uh, particle board, plywood basically. But they put the tarps up there for you. Let's go ahead and throw the tarps on. It's sitting over for the weekend. I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna do some research, see if I can just uh, get there Sunday night, drop the trailer with the paperwork, take out the tarps, put the tarps on the deck, or however they do it, unstrap, leave the trailer, and pick up an empty. Um, I can't remember uh, how they do it at that location. I ain't been there in like forever. But got some errands to run. I gotta pick up some flowers. Gotta go buy loads, grab some shower cleaner, grab some alcohol, grab some flowers. And I gotta do some freaking yard work. So get that knocked out and uh, get the weekend started, man. So hopefully everybody, like I said, have a safe, productive weekend, you know, when you're home, enjoy home, man. You just never know. You just never freaking know, man. But uh, appreciate everybody rocking with me. I tell you, man, if I can help one driver, man, that means I'm, I'm doing my part, man. I can keep doing this, all right? It ain't about the money because I don't get paid nearly enough, and it's not about that. I just do this while I'm out and just let you guys and gals just check me out and see what goes on while we're trucking. All right, so stay safe, stay blessed. Airborne Trucker signing off.